Good morning class. My name is G. Gautami. I am from EC department. Today we are going to recollect all the topics which we have studied in the last class. At the same time we are going to see a new topic that is PN junction diode as a rectifier. Now in our last class we have seen what is PN junction diode, how it is formed and VI characteristics of a PN junction diode fault and reverse bias of a PN junction diode, diode capacitance, diode resistance, switching characteristics of a diode. All these topics are covered in our last class. Now, today we are going to see a PN junction diode's application. One of the application of a PN junction diode we are going to see. That is what? PN junction as a rectifier. Today we are going to see PN junction diode as a rectifier. Before starting our class, first we need to know where this rectifier is used and why it is used. Clear? So far we have studied what is PN junction diode. So we gain knowledge on PN junction diode. Now we are going to see one application of our PN junction diode that is nothing but what? Rectifier. And now we are going to see why this rectifier is needed and where it is needed. Okay. Now for that let us see some few equipment which we use in our day to day life. Now here we can see a TV, laptop, mobile phone and mobile phone adapter and a audio system. Okay. These are the household appliances which we, which we are going to use in our day to day life. And these household appliances will work for DC supply only. This to work this we require what? DC supply only. But in our home, in an electrical outlet, what type of signal we are getting? What type of current we are getting? Tell me what type of current we are getting from this electrical outlet? You can see on the left hand side top diagram. So this is the electrical outlet which we are seeing in our home daily. Is it? Yes or no? Yeah. This electrical outlet we can see in our home. Right. From this we are getting what? AC current. You can see on the right hand side. Here you can see a AC signal that is alternating quantity you can see on the right hand side. Now what type of signal our laptop or our PC or our mobile phone require it requires a DC current. What is a DC current? Here if you see in the diagram over a time of period our current is not varying which is which is constant. This is what direct current. This is the current which is required by our laptops, mobile phone, chargers and other electronic gadgets. Right. Now, what is the problem here? Actually, what we are getting from our electrical outlet? That is AC. But what our laptop is required? That is DC. Now, what we need to do? We should have a device which will convert a AC signal into a DC signal. Clear? What we require? We require a device which will convert a AC signal into a DC signal. That is nothing but what? Power supply. Right. What is the power supply now? Which will convert a AC signal into a DC signal. Now, why power supply is required? Because whatever the mobile phone you are using, right? That requires what? DC supply. Clear? From where you are getting DC supply? From our power supply only. Okay? This is converting our AC into a DC by which you are getting a DC signal that is giving to your mobile phone so that your mobile phone will get charged and you can use your mobile phone. Clear? Now let us see the block diagram of a power supply and then we will know why we are studying power supply and what are the blocks in this power supply. Okay? Now in this 
block diagram of a power supply what our power supply is going to take it as an input obviously i ac input only what is the main motor of our power supply converting ac into a dc so the input will be a ac signal only so we are given a ac input that we can see here now this ac is given to what transformer which will step down the signal right now whatever the ac we are getting in our electrical outlet that is of what 230 ohms and of 50 hertz okay 230 ohms is very high and uh, this 230 ohms are not fixed and by our laptops or mobile phones or a tvs that is why we are going to step down this ac input so for that purpose what we used a step down transformer now power supply what we used we used a step down transformer now this is a signal from the transformer and this is given to what this is given to rectifier now see a rectifier now what is the first slide we have seen today pn junction diode as a rectifier this is what the application of rectifier this is where this rectifier is used right see unknowingly every day we are using rectifier right we are charging our mobile phones we are using our laptops see here so every day we are using rectifiers every day we are using a power supply in that we have a rectifier clear and today we are going to design a rectifier by which diode pn junction diode so that is why i named today's topic as a pn junction diode as a rectifier now see here when a certain signal is given to a rectifier what will be the output that we are going to see now now here you can see a rectified output see can you see the negative part is gone so this is what a rectified output now if you observe this carefully in a rectified output also you can see ac component is it you can see the ac component that means this is not a pure dc signal clear rectifier will convert ac into a pulsating dc this is what pulsating dc now now what we need to do we need to smooth this rectified output voltage for that we require what we require a filter circuit that we can see here now we used a filter by this filter you are going to smooth our rectified voltage rectified rectified output voltage you can see here now this is what filtered output can we say this is a dc signal can we say no no still some fluctuations are there some ac component is present so that is why what we are doing now we are using a regulator which will convert this filtered output to a pure dc signal right this is voltage regulator this voltage regulator when you give filtered output this will results in a pure dc signal we can see here so what are laptops and what are mobile phones are required they require dc but what we are getting ac now what we require power supply to convert ac into a dc i we i we did this yes we have converted ac into a dc but what we are used what is our main component here what is our main block here that is rectifier block clear this rectifier block is converting our ac into a pulsating dc once if we convert it to a pulsating dc then only we can filter then only we can regulate it clear this is how a power supply will have a blocks and why power supply is required to obtain a dc output 
why DC output is required to use our laptops and mobile phones. Clear? Now let us move on to the power supply components here. Now these are the blocks in the power supply. First one is transformer and the next one is rectifier and the next one is smoothing and the next one is regulator and the next one is load. Here what is transformer? Which type of transformer we have used? We used a step down transformer and what is the role of this step down transformer which will convert 230 volts into a lesser voltage. Clear? Uh, in our mains we are getting what? In from our electrical outlet what we are getting? We are getting 230 volts. This is very huge. Right? We are changing that to a low voltage. Now what is rectifier here? Rectifier is converting uh, AC signal into a pulsating DC. Now this smoothing circuit is nothing but what? Filter. What filter is doing? What filter is doing? This filter is smoothing the variations obtained by the rectified output. Okay. In a rectified output we have some variations. Those variations are smoothened by our smoothened by our filter circuit or else smoothing circuit and the regulator. Now what is regulator? A voltage regulator circuit in order to control the voltage to desired output levels. Right. What it will do? It will regulate the particular voltage level. You can see here. A voltage regulator circuit in order to control the voltage to a desired output level. So whatever the desired voltage we require that is given by our regulator. And here load. What is load? The load which uses the pure DC output from the regulated output. Clear? The load which uses the pure DC output from the regulated output output okay oh, which type uh, what are the devices which use dc supply laptops mobile phones now what i can load here what I, uh, our mobile phone is also called called as load right here yes our laptop is also called as what load here because they need a dc output they need what that is uh, our laptop or mobile phone requires what Pure DC. Remember, they need pure DC. And you need to remember one thing. Rectifier gives pulsating DC. Okay. What are mobile phones or laptops or else our TV require? That is pure DC. Clear? Now let us move on to the next slide where we can see what are the different types of filters are present. What are the different types of rectifiers are present? Okay, now here is the definition for a rectifier. Rectifier is a device which converts AC voltage into pulsating DC. Yes, we have seen in the power supply diagram. Yes, AC is converting into a pulsating DC. Now, a PN junction diode acts as a rectifier. And in our first class, we have seen a PN junctions diodes one uh, specific point right what is that PN junction diode conducts in or PN junction diode allows current to flow in only one direction and blocks the current in the other direction yes it is this is acts as a rectifying property yes yes it is so that is why a PN junction diode as a rectifier and we are using PN junction diode in our rectifier circuit. Now there is a point you can see here. The forward biasing and reverse biasing condition of diode makes the rectification. Clear? How this PN junction diode is going to act as a rectifier? By forward and reverse biasing conditions only. This PN junction diode is working as a rectifier. Now let us move on to the next slide. Now you can see here the circuit which does rectification is called as what? 
rectifier circuit. Simple. A diode is used as a rectifier. Already seen in the previous slide. Due to foreign dual bias condition, we are going to use a diode as a rectifier. Now, types of rectifiers. We have two types of rectifier. One is half wave rectifier and the other one is full wave rectifier. Now here, half wave rectifier circuit rectifies only positive half cycle of the input supply. Now, what is positive half cycle and what is negative half cycle? Yeah. Now, now I am going to draw a signal. Okay. Now, this is my AC. Right, this is my AC input. Now this part, this part is known as what? Positive half cycle and this part is known as what? Negative half cycle. What I mentioned for half wave rectifier? Half wave rectifier circuit rectifies only positive half cycle of the input supply. This is my AC input, right? For positive only, my half wave rectifier is going to work yes that is what mentioned there now when it works for half for positive half cycle only then what will be the diagram what will be the output of output of our rectifier half wave rectifier you can see here this is the output of our half wave rectifier clear what do we observe here? For a half wave rectifier, for positive half cycle only, it is going to conduct and for negative half cycle is not going to conduct. Again, for positive half cycle only, it is going to conduct and for negative half cycle is not going to conduct. This is what mentioned in this line. Clear? Now, you can see here. Whereas a full wave rectifier circuit rectifies both positive and negative half cycles of the input supply. Now this is our input. Yes. Yes or no. This is our input. Right. This is our input. Now for this input our full wave rectifier conducts for both positive as well as negative. When it is conducting for both positive and negative, what will be the output? Now let us see. Now let us see the output of our full wave rectifier. Now this is the axis. Okay. Now I am going to draw the output of a full wave rectifier. Now for positive it is going to conduct. For negative also it is going to conduct. And positive it is going to conduct and for negative it is going to conduct. Clear? This is what mentioned in these two lines. What is in the first line? A half wave rectifier circuit rectifies only positive half cycle. Yes, we, can. we already seen here. And whereas a full wave rectifier circuit rectifies both positive and negative half cycles of the inputs of yes, it is it is rectified both positive and negative both positive and negative yes it is rectified this is what mentioned in our two points and this is what this is what the difference between a half wave rectifier and a full wave rectifier now let us move on to the next slide where we can see the half wave rectifier. Now this is a circuit diagram of a half wave rectifier. Here we can see we have used one AC supply. Right. And here there is a transformer winding. One is primary winding and another one is secondary winding. And this is what? This is what type of transformer? It's a step down transformer. Here we are getting how much? Here we are getting how much? Here I am getting how much? That is nothing but 230. 230 volts. Right? That is converted into a lower voltage. 
maybe 12 right like that anything according to our step down transform we are going to get here now here our diode is present now this is what a half wave rectifier yes for a half wave rectifier we are using only one diode clear what half wave rectifier will do it will conduct for only positive half cycle and it will it will not conduct for negative half cycle now here you can read and here you can see half wave rectifier itself states that the rectification is done only for half of the cycle yes now let us see how this diode is going to conduct and what is the output here what is the v not here now let us see now i am going to draw here right now let us take the input signal here This is what this is what our input signal in this way and here we are going to get the same signal which is step down okay and here we can see the output what is what is he what is what I mentioned here, a half wave rectifier will conduct for only half cycle and as well as it will, it will, it will not conduct for the remaining cycle. Yes, that is what I am drawing here. It is conducting for the positive half cycle and it is not conducting for the negative half cycle. We can see here, this is negative. And this is negative and this is positive and this is positive now for positive for positive here we have positive for positive it is going to conduct and for negative this is not going to be conduct and how it is happening yeah and why it is happening and how it is happening that we are going to see now now here you have suppose here you say you have 12 volts here and this is of 0 volts right as it is connected to the ground now here positive 12 is given to what your positive side of your diode yes and negative is connected where ground if you observe the diode clearly for the positive terminal that means for anode terminal higher potential is connected and for the for the cathode terminal zero is connected for our positive yes positive peak for our positive peak what happened here you are getting 12 right that is plus 12 right for our first positive peak for our first positive peak you are getting plus 12 right that is given to our diode and this is of higher potential and here that is of what lower potential now see here when it is higher potential and when it is lower potential your diode is acting as what closed switch yes or no your diode is acting as a closed switch when your diode is a closed switch okay when your diode is a closed switch what it is doing what it is doing it is allowing the it is allowing the current yes that is why whatever the positive you are giving here that is seen here for the first positive half cycle that is this now for negative half cycle this will be what minus 12 yes positive will be of what minus 12 and here it will be connected to zero now you say see here anode potential is at minus 12 and cathode potential is at 0 volts now what we can say by this our diode in the reverse bias condition that is what open switch okay it's a 
open switch clear now when it is open does it allow current no that is why it is not conducting here you can see here it is not conducting right now this is how your half wave rectifier is going to work for positive half cycle that will be in the forward bias condition and you will get the positive cycle and for the reverse bias condition your diode will be in the reverse bias for negative half cycle your diode will be in the reverse bias condition so your diode is not conducted for negative half cycle now this results what this results a waveform of this type clear this is how you'll get the output of a half wave rectifier or you got like this or you got like this because your diode is conducting for only positive cycle and it is not conducting for the negative cycle so as it is conducting for only half cycle and naming it as what half wave rectifier now whatever we have studied now that that is put in a slide this is what now you can see here whatever i told whatever so far we have studied everything used in this slide uh, we can see here an input signal is given to the transformer which reduces the voltage level yes it would reduce because uh, our mobile phone laptop will not stand 230 volts this is very huge now the output from the transformer is given to the diode which acts as a rectifier now this diode gets on that means conducts for positive half cycle of the input signal hence current flows in the circuit and there will be a voltage drop of a load resistor yes the diode gets hot doesn't conduct that means a open switch for a negative half cycle and hence the output for negative half cycle will be current across the diode will be zero and v not that means output voltage is also zero hmm? diode will be in the reverse bias so that obviously it will be a open circuit you will not get any voltage here hence the output is present for positive cycle of the input voltage only we have seen right it will has output for only positive half cycle and there will not be a and there will not be output for our negative half cycle and this output will be pulsating which is taken across the load resistance yes rectifier output is always a what pulsating dc please remember that the output which you are getting from the rectifier will be always a always a pulsating dc now if you want pure dc what you need to do you need to add a filter circuit and then you need to add a regulator then you will get what a pure dc signal now this is how a pn junction diode is acted as a rectifier half wave rectifier now we can see whatever i have drawn in our previous slide that can seen here that can be seen here the input and output waveforms are shown in the figure you can see here this is the input signal yes and our diode is conducted for only positive cycles here and negative is zero see nothing is there here so hence this is the output of a half wave rectifier which is a pulsating dc okay now let us move on to the full wave rectifier so far we have discussed about half wave rectifier now we are going to see a full wave rectifier now we have full wave rectifier which is of two types one is center tap to full wave rectifier and the next one is bridge bridge full wave rectifier now let us uh, study about center tap to full wave rectifier and then we'll go to the bridge rectifier in the next class now what is full wave rectifier and how it is constructed that we are going to see okay 
here we can see a rectifier circuit that rectifies both the positive and negative half cycles can be termed as a full wave rectifier as it rectifies what complete cycle clear the construction of full wave rectifier can be made in two types they are center type of full wave rectifier and the next one is bridge wave rectifier um, in our next class in uh, sorry in our next slide we are going to see construction of a full wave rectifier okay here we can see a center type tap transformer used for a full wave rectifier okay now what is the features of the center tap transformer that we need to know okay this is the circuit diagram of a center tap full wave rectifier in this rectifier circuit we have used what center tapping we have used and we need to know why we, why we used here and what are the features of the center tap transform we are going to know that we are going to see now now the features of a center tapping transformer are the tapping is done by drawing a lid at the midpoint on the secondary winding this winding split into two equal halves by doing so that means what this is my secondary winding this is my primary winding right from this second winding i took a lid okay which does the center tapping that we can see in here okay that is what mentioned by our first point now the voltage at the tap the tapped midpoint is zero this forms a neutral point yes i took one lead here and uh, which is of what zero and this point is nothing but a neutral point now the center tapping provides two separate output voltages which are equal in magnitude but opposite in polarity to each other right here we'll get equal in magnitude here we can see here we here vm is there and as well as here vm is there but these are opposite in the, the polarity okay now the last point is a number of tappings can be drawn out to obtain different levels of voltages okay now let us move on to the next slide here mentioned how are diode d1 and d2 is going to work is mentioned here that we are going to see in our next slide now this is a circuit diagram of a center tap full wave rectifier and this we are going to see how diode d1 is going to conduct and how diode d2 is going to conduct here you can see a waveform of diode d1 don't get confused with that this is the output of d1 and d2 okay this is the output of only d1 clear this is not the output of your entire full wave rectifier this is only the output of what our diode d1 now let us see how are d1 d2 are going to conduct how the signal is present here after center tapping what are the signals present here before center tapping what is the signal present here we are going to see now okay now i am going to draw waveform that is ac signal this is a ac okay now when i used center tapping there we have seen in our last line last slide right the magnitude will be of same but opposite in the direction that we are going to see now what do you mean by same in the direction but opposite in the polarity that we are going to see now uh, by using a by you by using a center tapping this is the first wave and this is the second one you can see here this is what mentioned when i do a center tapping waveform will be of this kind clear right now if if i divided the same waveform into two equal halves that is a vm and vm here above we have vm and uh, 
for diode 2 also we have Vm and but these are different in polarities we can see here okay now how this diode D1 is going to conduct how diode D2 is going to conduct we are going to see now when when positive half cycle is going to conduct when we have given a positive half cycle what happened this and this is going through diode 1 and D2 now see here observe here carefully for diode D1 our positive peak is going and for diode D2 our negative peak is going by which we can say that our diode D1 will be in the forward bias condition and diode D2 will be in the reverse bias condition. Why so? How it is happening? That we are going to see here. Now see here. Here what positive is there? As positive is going. And this is positive of your diode. That is anode of your diode. And this is what? Cathode of your diode. When positive potential and when anode is at higher potential and here cathode is lower potential, what happens? Your diode will be in the forward bias condition. Now see here like this. Now this is the output of your diode D1. Okay. But your diode D2 will be in the off condition. Because here 12 is there whereas here 0 is there. Okay. Here minus 12 is there and here 0 is there. That means cathode potential is more compared to the anode potential. When it is more, your cathode potential more compared to the anode potential, then what happens? Your diode D2 will be, will be in reverse bias condition. For positive half cycle, D1 will be conducting, D2 will be non-conducting. Okay. And for negative half cycle, what happens? And this will get highlighted and this will get highlighted. When your D2 gets positive peak, what happens? D2 will be in the forward bias. Okay. And D1 will be in the reverse bias. At this point, at this point, your D2 will go into conduct for negative half cycle. When D2 is going to conduct, you will get the output like this. Clear? Now this is D1, diode D1. And the next one is diode D2. Okay, like that. For positive half cycle, D1 is going to conduct. For negative half cycle, D2 is going to conduct. This is how your full wave rectifier is going to work. Okay, so move to the next slide. Now, whatever I have mentioned so far, everything is written here. When a negative half cycle of the input voltage is applied, the point M, the point M at the transform secondary becomes negative with respect to the point N. This makes diode D2 forward biased, hence current I2 flows through the load resistor from A to B. We know we have the positive half cycle in the output even during the negative cycle of the input. Okay. This is how we are going to get the output. Here what happened? A D2 is going to connect for negative. A D2 is going to connect. You are going to get the signal in this format. This is for diode D1. How diode D1 is going to connect. In a positive half cycle of the input voltage is applied, the point M at the transformer secondary becomes positive with respect to the point N. This makes the diode D1 forward biased. Hence, current I1 flows through the load resistor from A to B. We now have a positive half cycle in the output. Now you can see here, positive is there as output. By this, for negative half cycle, here mentioned negative half cycle, we are going to get the waveform like this. See, from N to N. Right? Now, this is how our full wave rectifier is going to work. And this is how our diode D1 and D2 is going to work.
conduct. Now see, this is for diode D1. This is going to conduct for positive half cycle. And diode D2 is going to conduct for negative half cycle. As a combined output, we will get like this. Clear? Full wave rectifier output will be in this format. Now this is all about the full wave rectifier. In uh, tomorrow's class or else in our next class, we are going to see what is bridge full wave rectifier and the construction of a bridge full wave rectifier. Now so far we have studied about what is the power supply, what is the use of a rectifier, why rectifier is needed and where it is needed and how a rectifier is constructed and what are the types of rectifiers we have seen and also we have seen construction of a half wave rectifier and the construction of a full wave rectifier and how we are going to obtain the outputs we have seen. Thank you.